Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we analyze investing in food stocks, beverage stocks, and restaurant stocks. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in the best food companies. Is the world's most popular plant-based food company a good investment? You might be surprised by the answer. In this video we will be analyzing if Beyond Meat stock is a buy. Could Beyond Meat. Stock ticker symbol BYND. Rebound in 2024. Let's jump right in and find out. Cue the logo. Let's start with some background info on Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat was founded in 2009 by Ethan Brown, with the goal of creating delicious and sustainable alternatives to animal-based meat products. Using pea protein, rice, and other plant-based ingredients, Beyond Meat crafts products that mimic the taste and texture of ground beef, sausage, chicken, and even steaks. In 2019 Beyond Meat became the first plant-based meat company to go public on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Today the company is headquartered in El Segundo, California and tasty offerings are available in grocery stores and restaurants around the world. Now, let's get into the details that might impact their future as a publicly traded company starting with the price action. Starting with the one year chart we see that Beyond Meat had a cager of about minus 47%. Zooming out to the 5 year chart we see that Beyond Meat had a cager of minus 34%. Beyond Meat has been very painful holding for shareholders with the share price in a near constant decline. This does not bode well. If we perform a backtest comparison of investing $10,000 in Beyond Meat versus the S&P 500 we find some poor results for Beyond Meat. In that comparison with the S&P 500, $10,000 invested in Beyond Meat would have shrunk to $1,095 or a minus 41% cager versus $17,372 or an 14% cager if invested in the S&P 500. This demonstrates tremendous underperformance for Beyond Meat. A Beyond Meat investment would have also been more volatile with a 85% standard deviation versus 19% for the S&P 500. Beyond Meat outperformed the S&P 500 in terms of the best year performance for which Beyond Meat grew 65% versus S&P 500 29% gain but underperformed the worst year performance where Beyond Meat fell 81% versus the S&P 500 18% fall. In terms of max drawdown Beyond Meat fell 97%, more than 4 times the max drawdown of 24% for the S&P 500. And surprisingly, Beyond Meat did underperform the S&P 500 in comparisons using the Sharpe ratio and the Sortino ratio. This is really bad in almost every way. Now let's hop over to market share and take a look at Beyond Meat's market share, not to be confused with market capitalization. As a reminder, market share is the proportion of total sales generated in an industry by a particular company. For our case, we are looking at the total sales generated in the food, beverage, and restaurant industries by public companies. This gives us a very good proxy of where consumers are spending their money to eat. Expanding the dashboard we can look under food and see that Beyond Meat is categorized under packaged foods. Expanding the packaged foods tab we can see that Beyond Meat has the smallest market share and is clearly not growing. Let's look closer at the year by year changes in market share. So we come down here and type in the ticker symbol for Beyond Meat. BYND. And see that the market share is just 0.04% out of the publicly traded food, beverage, and restaurant stocks currently in the market. And sadly, Beyond Meat is losing precious market share. The 5 year market share cager for Beyond Meat is minus 3.34%. If we start in 2019 we see that the market share was 0.041%, 0.057% in 2020. 0.056% in 2021, 0.045% in 2022, and fell to 0.036% over the trailing 12 months. In this newest version of market share we can compare Beyond Meat with another peer company. In this case, let's choose Oatly, another popular plant-based company. Out of a basket of those two companies, Beyond Meat comprises just above 30% of the sales. This means that if you are a consumer that buys plant-based products, you are probably spending more on Oatly products than Beyond Meat. 
Worse still is that among customers who buy Beyond Meat and Oatly products, customers are spending less and less on Beyond Meat products every year. This means that Beyond Meat is losing market share on both a plant-based company basis and an absolute basis. This is really bad for Beyond Meat. Let's take a look at the fundamentals. Gross margin is minus 3%. Everyone, you cannot run a successful business selling products for less than the cost of the raw materials needed to make the product. Revenue has compounded at around 4% over the past 5 years and has dropped to $343 million most recently. Based on this data I do not think Beyond Meat has achieved product market fit. Looking at cash flow we see a minus 23% cager over the last 5 years for operating cash flow, while capex has worsened at a 20% cager. As a result free cash flow has worsened at a 13% cager. Negative operating cash flow may be forgiven if its occurrence is brief or the company is brand new. For Beyond Meat at this point it is really bad. Even with Beyond Meat moving to a capital light strategy, which has dramatically reduced capex, the company is still burning free cash flow. Weighted average shares outstanding have risen over the last 5 years, going from 42.3 million shares in 2019 to 64.3 million shares most recently. Beyond Meat has been diluting shareholders. Even after the IPO the share count continues to trend upwards. In March, 2024, the company announced another dilution event with a plan to sell up to $250 million in common stock, preferred stock, debt, warrants, purchase contracts, or units. For context, the recent market capitalization of Beyond Meat is $536 million. A $250 million share sale would dilute current shareholders by approximately 47%. Not good. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has worsened from minus 4.5% in 2019 to minus 42.5% in 2023. This is also not good. Management has not found any efficiencies in the business and losses at the company continue to mount. Another favorite metric is cash conversion cycle, a measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from 103 days in 2019 to 142 days most recently, Beyond Meat has gotten less efficient over time. The good news is that this value has been improving since 2022 and will hopefully continue. Last, let's look at Beyond Meat's debt. The net debt to EBITDA has increased over the past 5 years, going from minus 19.6 in 2019 to minus 5 most recently. We know from recent videos that the debt load at the company has actually grown over this time period. With the company being unprofitable, no fundamental improvement can really be inferred. The company desperately needs to become profitable. The fundamentals of Beyond Meat are very, very bad. In any event, should it be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Beyond Meat. It is a food company with a gross margin of minus 3%. The 5-year revenue per share cager is minus 7% and the 5-year free cash flow per share cager is minus 2%. Negative gross margin, falling revenue, and contracting free cash flow do not make a good company. A return on invested capital of minus 43% is horrible and will take a very long time to flip positive. Next, the cash conversion cycle of 142 days is very high and on a worsening trend. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of minus 5 means that the company is indebted and unprofitable, the worst of both worlds. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. Beyond Meat is negatively valued relative to the S&P 500 with a ratio of minus 0.06. The price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, cannot be calculated because the company is unprofitable. Well, 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 Beyond Meat has a lot of problems. From negative gross margins to shrinking market share, horrible free cash flow burn to negative return on invested capital, and rising debt to poor management, Beyond Meat has a lot of problems. 
The newest issue is the massive dilution from the proposed $250 million equity and or debt raise. If this is financed by selling common stock we can expect the share price to fall 47%. If it is financed with debt then that would bring the debt load to nearly $1.5 billion. There is no easy way out of these challenges for Beyond Meat. But, they have started to get some things right. Giving up on building new factories when demand is falling was a great decision. Just years late in the making, moving to a capital light strategy where Copacas produce the products has resulted in a capex reduction of more than 92% since 2021, but again a little too late. I have expressed this time and time again but what I think Beyond Meat needs to do is focus on and delight wealthier repeat customers with premium offerings. Revenue will fall, market share will continue to shrink but then Beyond Meat might be able to generate positive gross margins. With less sales they would need less staff and could drastically cut selling general and administrative costs. If they do that they might even end up being operating cash flow positive. Then $10 million to $15 million more in revenue would allow the company to become free cash flow positive and eliminate the need for future cash raises via debt and secondary equity offerings. Inexplicably Beyond Meat seems to be more focused than ever on trying to create mass appeal out of thin air with expensive to develop new products and what I assume to be extremely unfavorable partnership deals. I fear Beyond Meat is doomed to continue digging their ditch deeper being unwilling to redirect from using a losing playbook and will be no better in 12 months. For me, Beyond Meat is not going on the watch list. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Beyond Meat and their new dilution event? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.